Hello friends, uh, this is a video on the Earth's crust. Uh, this is a geography topic. This is extremely simple topic but extremely important topic for UPSC point of view. So let's start. Have pen and paper that uh, that is uh, mandatory for every video. So uh, we will start with the structure of the Earth. So uh, Earth's structure contains these things. Um, first is the lithosphere that is the outer layer of Earth's crust. So it is of two types, uh, the outer layer is made of granite rocks that is silica and alumina, uh, silica SI for silica and alumina uh, is represented by AL so it is also known as CL. So uh, lithosphere is also two parts, the upper part is uh, CL and its density is around 2.7 while uh, the lower lithosphere is uh, basaltic rocks uh, that is uh, they have a higher density and they are made from silica, iron, magnesium so S for silicon, I for iron and MA for magnesium so this is uh, generally the ocean uh, surfaces uh, while this uh, this is these are the mountain surfaces and the land surfaces so you should know the difference then uh, mantle that is also known as mesosphere so this mantle is the uh, just uh, below the earth's crust and it is in molten form, molten rocks are there in mantle and it is also olivine in nature so olivine means uh, a mineral consists of magnesium iron silicate so it is rich in magnesium this uh, mantle and then uh, comes the core core is also known as barysphere so you don't need to just uh, mug up these barysphere, mesosphere just know this uh, that first crust then mantle then core and then core is uh, made of iron and nickel uh, which is also known as NIFE knife so just remember this this could come then hydrosphere as you know all the water bodies like oceans rivers and all that and then atmosphere uh, uh, the air surrounding the earth crust uh, so uh, this is the basic structure of the earth and now we will see the diagram so this uh, as you can see this is the earth uh, the layer which is surrounding it is called atmosphere uh, here uh, it contains nitrogen oxygen oxygen is 21 percent so we breathe in that then this is the earth's crust as you can see this upper layer uh, this is uh, that uh, made of uh, granite rocks uh, which have lower density and they are mainly uh, of silk silica and aluminium so cl they are also known as cl but this ocean's crust like you know this this is ocean this is hydrosphere and its crust is made up of c sema just remember Sima is like uh, some Indian girl name so silicon and magnesium and then mantle is mainly of magnesium and iron and then core nick, uh, nickel and iron uh, knife so just remember that so section showing the structure and combustion of ours that's it then the, the classification of rocks so uh, there are a lot of uh, three types of rocks found first is igneous rocks uh, these are formed by cooling and solidification of molten rocks magma so this magma uh, it comes from uh, like volcanic eruptions or any fissure in the earth's crust which is uh, and this magma is the molten lava which is formed in uh, the mantle of uh, earth so this is where this um, this is mantle and this is where the molten uh, rocks are there which come to the earth's surface to form the igneous rocks so igneous rocks are crystalline, crystalline in nature they don't have layers like strata one after other a cube per egg and uh, they have high silicon content and are uh, some are acidic rocks uh, the acidic rocks are less dense and lighter in color and uh, based on the origin they are uh, being uh, classified in the following way the plutonic rocks plutonic rocks are like granite diorite then volcanic rocks lavas uh, they are formed by lavas they have a small crystal these pl plutonic rocks they actually get solidified uh, uh, inside the earth's crust only they are also uh, solidified by uh, lava only but the thing is that they are formed below the earth crust but these volcanic rocks they found on the they are formed on the surface of the earth and they have a small crystals but plutonic rocks have bigger crystals very high uh, large crystals so just remember that plutonic rocks consist granite and volcanic uh, rocks consist basalt uh, like our Deccan plateau then uh, uh, what is these vertical dikes and horizontal cells so what happens like if uh, there is a uh, fissure vertical fissure and magma comes and solidifies in it, solidifies in it then it forms a vertical di dike just remember that dike, dike means uh, vertical solidification of magma 
and horizontal cells cells are means like if the the lava comes and it trans gets solidified below the earth crust in a horizontal position so that is known as cells so igneous rocks are very hard and very resistant and they are used generally for making roads monuments and grave stone grave stone means jo marne pe patthar lagaye jate hain christians mein those are uh, known as grave stones then the second types of rock uh, type of rock is sedimentary rock so as the name suggests that they have layer formation they are means uh, sedimentary in nature they are stratified rocks means uh, layer after layer and they are means like different types coarse also soft also hard also they are fine grained also so they have so many types uh, the but the main feature is they that they are not uh, crystalline in nature uh, they are they do not have crystals igneous rocks have crystals then sedimentary rocks are fossil because uh, due to layer after layer like some plant dies so it gets fossil in that uh, rocks and the age classification is done uh, on the basis of how, how old the uh, stratification is that is one type and then another type is uh, how to classify the sedimentary rock is by their origin so if like they have uh, they have been formed by mechanical sedimentary rock uh, process then Uh, like uh, just uh, layer after layer and they have just uh, mix uh, attached to each other then that is mechanical sedimentary rocks so for one example is sandstone so sandstones are formed like uh, layer after layer uh, these uh, sand sand gets combined to form the sandstones then uh, and uh, another example is conglomerate in which large pebbles form uh, means uh, bade bade patthar they just uh, get together and form a rock uh, after some time then second type of uh, sedimentary rock is organically formed rock so these are the uh, ma- made from the organic materials for example like uh, polyps uh, and cal carious type means those uh, animals or plants which have calcium cells so when they die they just leave these their shells and from them limestone and chalk are formed as well as you know the coral leaf example so that is also sedimentary organically formed rock and then uh, carbonaceous rocks so these are formed by um, generally plants uh, when plants die then they they form this coal peat lignite due to heat and pressure inside the earth's crust and uh, then another is chemically formed so chemical rocks uh, sedimentary rocks are like rock salts uh, for example gypsum gypsum is used in plaster of paris and its formula is calcium sulfate caso4 and uh, then potash k2so4 nitrates so these are uh, some sedimentary rocks which are formed chemically means like uh, they get dissolved and they get formed in like seabeds and uh, those places so just remember uh, the characteristics of sedimentary rocks then metamorphic rocks these are the third type of rocks after igneous and sedimentary so these rocks uh, are formed due to great heat and pressure uh, means they just get inside the earth's crust and due to very high heat and due to high pressure from the earth's crust they just get uh, change their original properties they become crystalline in structure from even sedimentary rock can become metamorphic rock and igneous rocks can also become metamorphized so we will see that clay gets metamorphized into slate limestone becomes marble marble is very important for making buildings as you know that taj mahal is made from marble then sand and stone becomes quite chait so it becomes more harder and then coal into graphite graphite you know that uh, pencils use graphite so these are some of the metamorphic rocks just uh, you should remember the basic process then the influence of rock types on landscape so if uh, how rocks determine the landscape so rocks are very very important for the landscape because uh, the types of rocks determine if uh, how the erosion is going to occur and how deposition is going to occur so for example if igneous rocks are there they will not be generally easily uh, they will not be generally uh, easily eroded but uh, if like some uh, very uh, sedimentary rocks are there which are means like loosely bound so they will get eroded easily so that's how mountains are found and uh, many uh, like plains are formed due to uh, those things so we will see later then earth movements and the major landforms so how uh, earth decides the 
landforms that are formed landforms means the surface of the earth so first of all you know, you should know that agents of denudation which are the running water rain frost sun glaciers wind and waves so these are the agents of denudation the denude means nanga kar dete hain earth earth surface so uh, we know that orogeny means uh, mountain building process uh, that is known as orogeny so that is uh, formed by uh, folding and fracturing of earth's crust so this is another form how major landforms are made first are made by agents of denudation then orogeny uh, some examples of orogeny is the young fold mountains like alps himalayas and these and rocky so these are the some of the important mountains which are formed recently and this questions came in this year uh, mains examination uh, just describe all the young fold mountains where they are and how they are formed so you should know that they are formed by folding i will tell you in later in this uh, lecture only then let's discuss about types of mountains so first type is fold mountains this is the question which was asked in this year mains so they are formed by large scale earth movement in earth crust due to stresses of compression so if like uh, this is the earth crust and uh, a large compression force is um, acting on it due to the, uh, anything like tectonic plate theory or uh, due to movement in mantle of the earth so a compression occurs and after that what happens like this get compressed and uh, it becomes like uh, in a wave form so uh, some portion get depressed and some portion goes very high so that is known as anticline and the depressed portion is known as syncline so you know that this horizontal surface becomes like uh, vertical it uh, rises and that uh, makes it uh, then fold mountains are formed so we will see uh, firstly the fold mountains will be formed so you know that this is anticline this is syncline then what happens like if the compression is still going on then after some time over fold occurs so the formation will be like this and uh, if still the stresses are there then recumbent fold occurs so this is the recumbent fold you can see that it has almost means it is going to get cracked here and if still the compression is high then uh, Uh, the over thrust fold occurs which means that they just this land goes uh, behind uh, this uh, overlapping land and what happens like this goes down and this goes up so this upper portion is known as nape so just uh, uh, remember these things like first uh, incline syncline then uh, over fold then recumbent fold then nape so even in the questions that was asked in mains you should uh, have written only this if you are, if you know this uh, basic thing then it's okay no need to just mug up this thing then uh, these are uh, fold mountains are also known as mountains of elevation and they are associated with volcanic activity so large volcanic activity occur in these areas because you can see that if this land subsides then it will become heated and it will form a volcano here so we will see that in the volcano chapter okay so this is a diagram which you could have made this year in mains so these are the young alpine folds so this is the andes sorry this is the rocky uh i don't remember if this is rocky or this is andes i think this is andes and this is rockies okay and uh, these are the and this is the himalayan mountains and uh, these are the alps and uh, these are basically the young fold fold mountains alps this is the alps this is the himalayan mountains this is the uh, andes and this is the rockies so and still here some young fold mountains are there you can see that this is the major folding region so that's it then block mountains so how block mountains are formed like uh, we have known that if compression occurs then uh, Uh, fold mountains are formed like uh, so here the tension is occurring means tension means the the force is acting in uh, just opposite direction so this uh, land is going this side this land is going this side so what will happen that this uh, particular this is a fault line so uh, this particular land will subside niche chala jayega and due to that this uh, particular uh, um, land becomes a plan because this uh, this is gone down so this uh, the here rift valley is formed and here, here this this is mountain form so this mountain block mountain is also known as known as horst h o r s t just remember that and uh, this is the rift valley which is formed then another uh, way of forming the rift valley is also by compression so uh, 
what if the fold then there are two fault lines and uh, due to the compression the folding doesn't occur like we have seen like in fold mountains it becomes like this but uh, in uh, this uh, particular uh, when block mountain is found what happens like there are two fault lines so this block just rises and this block also rises up above, above so this particular land becomes low land and this becomes rift valley so uh, you should uh, remember some examples of rift valleys like uh, great rift valley of africa okay and uh, what happens like if uh, this uh, particular uh, lands are uh, they go up so after some time due to denudation or means like erosional process this particular overhanging sides are worn back so this is the final <coughs> way in which rift valley is formed then this is a figure of great rift valley of uh, east africa as you can see that uh, this uh, uh, rift valley starts from here and it goes here and so you can see that this is formed due to tension here forces are occurring in this side and here uh, some plate is going in this side and here it is going in this side so this uh, from as you can see from indian ocean it has gone to the red sea this is uh, the great rift valley of africa and many lakes are formed like lake victoria lake tanganyika and uh, lake malawi and so many lakes are formed in this great rift valley so just uh, if uh, some question from rift valley comes you can just draw this figure then another type of mountains are volcanic mountains so volcanic mountains are formed by solidification of molten lava this lava is coming from here and it will just get solidified so this this is the vent from which lava is coming outside and uh, this uh, this gets solidified so it contains lava ash and then the dust liquid mud, mud etc and you can remember one example which is mount fuji of japan it, it is a volcanic mountain there are many volcanic mountains uh, this year also one question came how philippine islands were formed so they were they are also volcanic origin so we will study that later then another type is residual mountains so residual mountains are like uh, this was the original almost flat plateau surface this was the uh, flat surface and residual means which are left means residue so what happened like they and this flat surface got denudated denu uh, and due to denudation means like uh, down cutting by rivers or glaciers uh, these uh, holes are formed <coughs> sorry and uh, this uh, this when it uh, makes the rift or means it makes valley like glaciers and rivers make valley so this uh, portion automatically goes up and this is like mountains only so these are the residual mountains so these are dissected in by rivers into hills and valleys and uh, one example is deccan plateau also deccan plateau whatever mountains it contains it is due to residual feature means uh, those mountains are formed due to gla uh, glacial not glacial actually due to river erosion so and then we have studied about mountains now we will study about plateaus so uh, plateaus means they are they are elevated uplands with level surfaces they are also known as table lands so uh, the, now we will study their types so first type is tectonic plateaus so what happens like earth movement uh, earth movement uplifts or uh, downlifts so that uh, leads to the formation of plateau for example like deccan plateau which is a continental block it was formed due to tectonic uh, activity that is uh, means movement of earth's crust uh, means like earthquake or those things so that is the uh, the main feature of deccan plateau then you should know what is intermont plateaux so intermont plateaux is enclosed by fold mountains from all sides so for example the tibetan plateau in uh, is uh, surrounded by himalayas and kullu so these are the mountains which are rising upwards so automatically the portion which is not uh, getting raised that becomes uh, fold mountain so these are one of the highest and most extensive uh, plateaus tibet plateau is very high plateau and it is extensive it is the uh, in very uh, large area and even so high still it is a plateau because himalayas and kullu kullun are still rising they are fold mountains yen fold mountains then uh, second type of uh, plateaus are formed by volcanic uh, function so what happens like mol molten wall of lava forms successive sheets of basalt and uh, one example is the uh, deccan plateau in north western part north western means like uh, maharashtra region and uh, some parts of gujarat and some parts of madhya pradesh so the, those areas uh, are the 
volcanic plateau then dissected plateau so what happens like those plateaus which get dissected means uh, they get highly eroded so they are dissected plateau for example uh, grand canyon in uh, south america so sorry north america so those uh, canyons have been formed by uh, uh, eroding materials like rivers and uh, now we will talk about the civil services mains uh, syllabus so it has a specific portion like uh, major resources found in the world so you should know what resource uh, these plateaus are very rich in mineral resources so you should know that which plateau contains what so african plateau yields gold diamond copper manganese chromium so african plateau is very very rich in these things then brazilian brazilian plateau contains iron and manganese so and deccan plateau that is in india it contains manganese coal and iron coal is very important for formation of steel this question also came this year in mains that uh, how you will uh, describe the shift in iron and steel industry in the world so you should know this uh, if you know the what are the resources found in different regions then you can answer these questions then plateau of western australia it contains gold and iron so gold is found in africa and australia these are the rich places and we have iron and uh, brazil has also iron but we have coal also so okay then comes the uh, plains so we have studied about mountain plateau now plains so plains are area of lowland level means they are uh, highly plain and undulating undulating means like uh, maybe a little folded and faulted means rolling in motion but they will be like level so could we also be low hills and these are extremely populated areas plains uh, because they are, they can be used for cultivation and uh, some examples are indo gangetic plain like uh, ganga river our this up bihar bengal these are the extensive populated area and agriculture is the main uh, thing done here then mississippi plain and uh, yang ze plain this is in uh, china and uh, most extensive temperate grasslands are found in these type of plains so uh, temperate uh, lands generally contain a lot of grasslands you know that uh, uh, generally uh, we will see later that uh, first equatorial climate then tropical then temperate so temperate uh, in temperate places rainfall is so low that only grasslands are formed uh, the trees don't form there so there are extensive grassland like russian steppes in central asia these are it is known as steppes in north america prairies in north american uh, plains which contain these grasslands are prairies and argentinian plain uh, grasslands are known as pampas so these are the some places where extensive uh, agriculture is also done for wheat corn and all those things okay so plains are also three types we will see uh, what three types are uh, of plains are there so first is structural plains so these are structurally depressed lowlands they have automatic automatically been formed on earth so for example uh, russia is uh, a structural plain great plains of usa are also structural and central lowlands of australia they are also structural plains then depositional plains so these are formed by deposition of material brought down by various agents of transportation like rivers glacier coastal plain wind so how uh, means like rivers they form alluvial plains like for example up punjab haryana then flood plains like uh, flood plains of bihar bengal and then deltaic plains like sundarbans then for example nile delta of egypt uh, you should know what is a good uh, what is actually importance of these plains so uh, that egypt egyptian plain is good for rice and cotton then ganges delta that is uh, very good for rice and jute you we know that jute is produced in bengal as well as bangladesh and rice is uh, extremely produced in bengal right bihar and up also eastern up then plains of north china huangho river is there so it uh, north china means uh, upper china region so the, it contains wide range of crops so these are the depositional plain by rivers then uh, glaciers also form a depositional plain so what happens like uh, when uh, earlier the, during uh, ice age there were glaciers on large part of earth so when they contracted or they went towards the pole then uh, they formed outwash plains and uh, these outwash plain contain boulder clay which is mixture of boulders boulders means patthar as and clay so uh, usually this is barren land 
but uh, this is also known as still plane or drift plane and only some part of outwash plane like which have less boulder and more clay that is uh, useful for agriculture otherwise it's not useful then coastal plane so coast also form planes for example we wave form wave action and winds on uh, beaches they form the coastal plane so what happens like uh, due to erosion uh, muds uh, sand marine swamps you know that uh, sundarban is like swamp only then uh, tidal and estuarine lowlands these are also formed due to the uh, downgrading of uh, sea level or uh, more deposition of uh, uh, mud in that uh, coastal area so for example the netherlands netherland you know that holland which is also known as holland so this is uh, a country which is ex totally formed due to this coastal plain only and gulf coast coast of usa that is eastern coast of usa that is also emergent coastal plain so emergent coastal plain means like uh, plain is already formed and uh, the uh, land slightly gets uplifted so that becomes emergent coastal plain and then how winds how winds form planes so what happens like uh, wind form wind ta take deposits which are known as aeolian deposits aeolian deposits so they carry very fine particles known as loesses so these loesses are deposited in higher areas like hills valleys and uh, there they form planes which is known as loesses plain so you know that hong uh, this uh, generally the, the winds carry these loesses from desert areas and they just deposit it uh, in uh, mountain mountainous areas and valleys so these are also extremely important for cultivation of crops uh, then we will see erosional plains so uh, first is the plains of denudation so again the denudation you know the denudation agents like running water air wind and glaciers so these are caused by agents of erosion you know that and uh, they have low undulating undulating means rolling means upar niche upar niche plains and they are also known as penny plains almost plains why they are known as almost plain that is penny plain because they are undulating means almost rolling in nature like this as you can see so this this was the uh, original land and after uh, so much denudation it has became like this you can see that this is almost plain only it is slightly higher than slightly lower than slightly higher so this is known as penny plain then rivers deepen their valley and widen their banks in course of time forming plain so what happens like if rivers are flowing like this and when they slightly keep on cutting uh, just uh, both sides and they also form a river plain so that is uh, also a type of uh, plain uh, which is uh, erosional plain then in glaciated regions like uh, uh, where the glaciers have formed the plains uh, like in finland so what happens like when glaciers contract they also scour uh, plains means they just uh, make sure that they uh, erode all the uplifted or down, uplifted uplifted features from the land so they form a lot, lot of lakes uh, because, because glaciers have very high weight so their uh, erosional capacity is also very high so finland is one such country which has a, a large number of glaciated regions that is glaciated plains and these are actually formed uh, they have became lakes so finland is known as country of lakes and then uh, we have gravelly or stony desert plain called reg in africa so this is formed by wind deflation of eroded desert materials so when uh, like uh, whatever uh, loose particles are there they get eroded by the wind and whatever things are left that they become plain like low land it becomes plain so that is known as reg in africa so just remember these things and then this is the last topic that is mechanical weathering in arid or semi arid areas arid means sukhe pradesh and semi arid means like uh, where the rainfall is low but there is a little rainfall so there uh, uh, the mountain slopes we are back and they uh, leave a gently sloping pediment or pedi plain so these are the mountain slopes and uh, this is the mountain slope and it has you can see that it has veered down so it is veering like it was initially this type then it has veered down like this then it has became like this and now after so much erosion only this is left so as you can see that uh, this is the original uh, mountain and now it has only Uh, became this after denudation and erosion 
so this is the plane which is formed so you can see from here to here it is a total flame and whatever mountain portion is left uh, after this uh, denudation it is called Inselberg so you know now what is pedi plane penny plane and all those things so this chapter is over thank you and uh, please like share comment and subscribe and the video ending quote is physical fitness is not only one of the most important keys to a healthy body it is the basic of uh, dynamic and creative intellectual activity so you should be uh, you should try to remain physically fit uh, right <laughs> like right now i am not physically fit i am uh, having cold so i should make sure that i have a healthy body otherwise uh, i won't be able to be creative and dynamic in nature so if i want creative intellectual activity i should be healthy and you should also be healthy so and this this quote was made by john f kennedy so just make sure that you are physically fit and uh, next video will be on volcanism and earthquake that is uh, chapter 3 from goche leong so we will discuss the concepts of how volcanoes are formed and what what is what are their effects and then how earthquakes occur and their effects so we will see that in next video and uh, we i have put link for goche leong in the description below and that's all for uh, this video thank you very much